I made a video sarcastically titled, Jordan Peterson is not a conservative transphobe. And this video came out four years ago. Well, even more than that. Um, but yeah, okay. It was almost five years ago. December 30th, 2018. I wrote this video and I made this video. It has 2.9 thousand likes, 146,000 views. I can't see the dislikes now, but I'm pretty sure that the dislikes greatly outnumber. RIP to the dislike button. Yeah. See someone uh, fizz in the chat says 6.1K dislikes. If we look at it, wow. if we look at the comments, and these are one month ago, obviously, which is uh, why they're going to be greatly different. Damn. But if you look at the top comments, okay, from, I love to see the intellectuals come out in the TYT comment section I, I said four years ago. It's, it's amazing how mischaracterized this man gets. Whatever you think about him, he said repeatedly when asked, he'll use the pronoun he, she. Like, back then, it was very obvious that he was transphobic, but people, but people just to refused to recognize that he was, and uh, people were going crazy over it. Like, they, they, anytime anyone said anything like this, they would get absolutely ripped up to shreds. Yeah. And uh, the reason why I'm showing this is not to be like, look how right i was even five years ago it but is funny to see how peterson has completely validated every uh, attack uh, unfair attack that the left has made about him in the last yeah. like year and all his fans just went quiet like nobody's came forward and been like yeah <laughs> but but even then this is five years ago and he was still like you know this yeah, is him a ridiculous person. this is him at like a turning point usa conference you know what i mean where he was like a keynote speaker and people were still refusing to recognize that and it just like it sucked because back then everyone was always like, "Oh, you fucking, you're a piece of shit. You're a you're soy liptard. You're attacking this like profoundly beautiful centrist mind who only has the best intentions and like wants what's best for society. He's an intellectual. Who the fuck are you?" Um, and 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 then I didn't have a base of support, but now I do. Yeah, some of which. Uh, who used to be issue. fans of Jordan Peterson? So that's that's what keeps me going. I got I want I have a question for you. Yes, indeed. Um, this is this is something that I think about a lot. Uh, but I I'm sure you have also seen this. But like we basically kind of briefly touched on it, where like a lot of a lot of content creators I think tap into um, younger black predominantly male audiences by talking about pre-existing uh, constructs, like forms of oppression, whether it's like patriarchy or in certain instances, it's like, um, you know, anti-LGBT sentiment, things of that nature, PUA stuff. And I do think that that kind of content uh, has a lot of, uh, I mean, it, it's captivating for younger audiences in general, not and just black general. audiences, but younger men are looking for that kind of thing. Um, and I, I don't, while there are more uh, white counters to that sort of stuff, which is, you know, it, it's still ultimately not all that effective. There, there isn't like, um, I haven't seen a way where, where there's a big wave of, I mean, I guess outside of content creators that you mentioned in yourself, there isn't as big as a, a counter movement uh, that is like objectively leftist uh, black content for, black audiences that's like objectively leftist there are examples but they're not as popular as what i'm saying so a couple of things the reality is outside of um kevin samuels who was like an anomaly on so many levels yeah that stuff isn't that like overt misogyny isn't as appealing to young black men as you might think um, and, and there's also not as much value in it for the content creator. What I think is more common, somebody, I just saw somebody say Tariq Nasheed, Tariq Nasheed, like, just like for that's, me, uh, that's oh, but Tariq Nasheed's audience was white men. You know what I'm saying? And like, you, damn, he's going to come after you for that one. <laughs> I never said that. It's the, it's the fucking truth, Tariq, your audience, when you were I, doing I, your pimp hustler shit, it was I, all I am, white men. I, I am pro ADOS <laughs> movement. I don't know what this man is saying. Okay. Please don't come after me. Um, and so like, so, you know, and Kevin Samuels, audience was probably, um, it's definitely wasn't predominantly uh, women. Right. But it was way more women driven than male driven than, than your typical manosphere figure. Yeah. The actual black manosphere. Those guys can't. Cause he was hot. 
he, he was he was attractive. He was traditional. He was conservative in a, a palatable way. Um, and so it, it and he was talking directly to women, which is something the black manosphere couldn't do. The actual black manosphere, they can't get more than a, a couple like 100 people in a given chat. Right. So I, I don't I, I'm going to just be if I'm honest. I think what you're seeing is mostly smoke and mirrors and, or, or no, I'm, I'm, I was thinking more of like, uh, people like Andrew Tate. Right. And, and there are plenty of other like content creators that aren't like exclusively black manosphere content creators at all. Right. I just meant like manosphere content creators and how they can like sometimes capture a, an audience of young boys. Right. Which also happens to include black boys as well. They use so it's the same thing of um why this fucking guy with the little dirk, the same thing he's doing. It's, it's it's the criticism I have through a lot of my content, which is blackness is such a viable, valuable, and easily accessible commodity in entertainment, right? If I can project a uh if I can project the black image in the right way people will pay attention because people, they love our shit from rock and roll, rock and roll 60, yeah. 70 years ago to Obama 20 years ago to, you know, whoever's coming next, they love our shit. And so you're always going to pull a handful of, of young, you're, you're going to pull more people with anything you do. If you can attach a black aesthetic to it. And so with these young boys in particular, you're going to just like your energy, is going to collect young black boys, you know, like a Sean to black, right. Is going to collect them into whatever you're doing. It's more so about, I actually did my paper. So I did my master's thesis. I do think that that is like much smaller though, for me, especially the, like my, my black audience is, is definitely, uh, I would go so far as to say like, what is it? Like 6%, 7%. It's actually lower than, um, like someone like XQC, for example, would probably have like a larger black audience because he's not like overtly political. Does that make sense? Yeah. The politics change that. But even I would say XQC's black audience and Andrew Tate's black audience are still going to be a lot smaller than, um, you know, like per capita than mine or uh, Corey Kenshin. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, because the thing, the thing people I, don't. Corey like, Kenshin is who I was thinking of. That's like one good example, like great example and that's of why like. Don't, that's why we don't a, get through the door. A political content creator that is like you know, clearly putting on like a very uh, solid message. Yeah, and it's like I know, I know you all just finished beef with them, and I don't, I'm not fans either. But like uh, Abba and Preach, mm -hmm. right? They're apolitical. They're definitely right wing, but they're they're like semi apolitical. They they pull a bigger they're gonna pull a bigger black audience than Sneeko or Andrew Tate or any of these guys. Yeah. Because like historically that's kind of what I said earlier about patriarchy and black men. We have access and are protected by patriarchy in a lot of ways, but the appeal of patriarchy doesn't look like the bullshit that happens on the internet. Most black manosphere dudes are will be considered clowns in their like greater community. Like if I in real life, whenever I like like black manosphere dudes are like debate bros in that they only have power and exist like the hyper misogynistic people only we get out of black manosphere. Like if there was a, a kid in my kid's school, a, a black boy in my kid's school doing the Andrew Tate thing, uh -huh. he would probably be laughed at by the greater black boys because it's so try hard because it's yeah. so divorced from the actual aesthetics of black masculinity that they're seeing. And this is not to say, I want to be clear to anybody, um, to, to whoever's uh, going to be critical. This is not to say that there aren't elements of, you know, misogyny, misogynoir, all those things that are happening in the black communities. It's just that that comes from a different source than an Andrew Tate. That comes from, that comes from the reality of black life in black communities. That comes to overarching um, uh, influence of patriarchy. You might, you might say that comes yeah, that's from why, like, that's why I specify by saying like, I'm not doing the classic, like uh white liberal shtick of being like, well, what about homophobia in the black community? Black community? Like I, I wasn't singling out the black community in particular to be like address these crimes. Like it was more so trying to understand the, it's the, like every, it's every community and uh, it exists in every community. And I, I feel as though like, young black boys are also susceptible to that kind of message, just like young white boys are. 
And the aesthetic- I guess for me, it's like I'm not accessible. Like, I don't know how to approach it. I don't know how to reach out uh, to... You can't. Yeah, I don't it's think I'll be not, able to. It's, you, 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 are, you, are, you will not have... You don't have the features that you need. So you, you can't, you're smartly and thankfully are not like, if you were to pull, if you were to become Eminem or some shit, <laughs> right? Yeah. If you were to come in here and like overtly throw on a black scent and like present like a black veneer, you could catch some of those same young boys. But you thankfully, because I was saying Aiden Ross, you, you Aiden, want me to be Aiden Ross. If you were Aiden Ross. Yeah. You could do it because then you then let's look because a See, lot look, of these young boys is, told you to wear a do rag, dumbass. <laughs> Please, don't I would do get it. I would get canceled. that's bad. If I, I have I have worn it when uh when someone sent it to me. You didn't uh, know what you- <laughs> well, I mean, I I, I had to. It's uh, a, a, a black cover, fan man. of mine sent it to me on uh, on one of my PO boxes. I had to do it one time. I, I'm I'm not gonna <laughs> I'm I'm going to hold that uh, for you in the moment. <laughs> but no, like so. Like Aiden Ross is actually a perfect example because he's he's racially ambiguous, kinda. Um, yeah. He he presents this black aesthetic. He he involves himself in you know the black vernacular, all these things. Yeah. And so, like, if you are a young black, you are a young black. He talks man. about he talks about issues that like young black uh, boys are talking about, right? As well. But he ain't got shit on um. What's the fucking guy's name? Top of the food chain right now, streaming. Young oh, black Kai. Kai locks. He ain't got yeah. shit on Kai. Yeah. And so it's like the black boys are actually watching. Kai. Oh, one hundred percent. They love him. Kai, th- I thank you for. It's like it's like Kai and RDC are at the top, like with respect to that, and I think like RDC especially, I would say, but Kai as well. I think they like Kai for being so young. I think carries himself a certain way where he understands that like he needs to be brand friendly, which yeah. is a very good thing in yeah. my opinion. And they're like, also he, he, trying. You yeah, know what I mean, like the the thing that so when you're going back to like even talking about my sons, when you are a young black man, you don't have a lot of imagery to aspire to. Like the the images are often manufactured, and yeah. you can kind of tell. The negative images may feel familiar, but they're obviously negative images, and so like you're kind of in a wavelength in between those two extremes. Um, there's, there's, there are black, there are young black men that don't fuck with me because I'm, I'm too soft. You know what I'm saying? I'm too gentle. I'm too friendly to like trans folks and and queer people in my, in my audience. Right. Um, and so maybe they'll like, you know, some of the younger dudes I, I fuck with more. Uh, and so those young boys are always looking for images. It's like all boys. They're looking for images that reflect the, the, what they, what they're trying to aspire to. Yeah, and so the the absence of a black aesthetic, a manufactured, I'll be clear, a black aesthetic, then you versus a Aiden Ross makes that difference. And then of course, there's a reason why so many um, Manosphere major figures historically, maybe not now, have been men of color: Andrew Tate, Roosh V, Kevin Samuels, um, and probably a couple of more. Um, Andrew Tate transcends that so much that like I, I often forget that he he's is. like like his dad was literally like a black chess. A, he was a, he wasn't a grandmaster, but like I think he was like I am. Yeah, he, and, and yeah. His his dad was a black chess genius. His dad looks like the type of dude. Like when I saw his dad, I was like, oh, this makes so much sense now. But I want to get into that. Um, and so like even though he doesn't engage with his blackness, his blackness gives him a, an explicit access to like this. People are saying I I didn't know Tate was black. Yes, yes. Tate, Andrew Tate, 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 is, Tate is he's technically half black, and people argue about that. You mentioned Ados. I don't want to talk about it. Oh, um, I was just <laughs> kidding. I, I I was definitely joking. Um, but like, so yeah, Ados is ha- uh, Andrew Tate's half black, and there's a way that white males in particular fetishize men of color, right? Yeah. Even 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 a Rouge V or Andrew Tate or even you, like, is he, you're still spicy white. Like, if you were just a nor- if you were just a if you were from uh, Wisconsin, you wouldn't have this chat doing what you're doing. Probably. You would have to be more like an Aiden Ross or insert shitty debate guy here to to get. That's actually really interesting. I never thought about it like that. Yeah. Like, it's like I, I, I'm Turkish. So like I'm technically white. You know what I mean? In the right. way that like in the way that I grew up in in Turkey, I'm a part of like the dominant in group. Mm hmm. 
like if whiteness is proximity to power, I'm politically white. So I never really thought about it right. as like uh, being anything but that. You're not Georgia white though. <laughs> yeah, no, no. You're I not come visit me in, in Atlanta white. And, and like, and so because of that, there's people in this chat. They and it's un, and it's not like and to be to be nice to the people in the chat. It's a very unconscious thing because, as we've said multiple times, white supremacy is insidious and renders itself invisible. So you don't even know that your project that there's a projection of man. And then also, you're an attractive man. You're a tall man. You know, it's all these different features. Yeah. And so, like, there's an attachment that you're about to, a bunch of white people in your chat are going to be like, "Oh my god, I have to stop. I'm racist. I'm going to stop watching Kazan." <laughs> <laughs> Um, but because of that, like, that is how, that is how a lot of this shit works. And so you're maneuvering multiple discourses of race and gender unintentionally. And so, you know, you're, you know, so like Kai or like in the politics combined with the absence of, uh, certain aesthetics is not going to find 15 year old, like the same 50 year olds that might fuck with me, even though I have the same politics, you know what I'm saying? They see, they see, okay, they got the locks. I think our audiences are nerdy though. Like that. That's what I mean. Like they're I, they're not as nerdy as you think. Or you think so? Well, my audience isn't as nerdy. Cause as like think. the way I see it is like, I, so I, I play a lot of basketball. It's like one Avenue that I have to like talk to people directly mm -hmm. that don't know who the fuck I am. And I, I take advantage of that as like a normal person. You know what I mean? And every time I talk to like, I don't know. I mean, there's a very diverse group of people, but like anytime I talk to like black teenagers, they all, they love Aiden Ross. They know about Aiden Ross. They obviously love and idolize Kai. Um, but I don't think they're like that invested. I mean, it's, it's sampling bias, obviously. Well, no, no, it's, it's, I mean, yeah. So th them in particular, right. I, I don't know. I can't call it especially with Aiden. Um, but it's also like the aspirational masculinity. They, they can't aspire to what you're doing that much. They have to find something that is more in line with what seems realistic and what seems accessible. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If they, if they aspire like the same <laughs> there, the, if they aspire to what you're doing too much, they're going to face criticism from their peers because of how distant you are from black aesthetics. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you, you just, you know, it, it is what it is. And on the flip side, the one of the reasons why I, I do what I do is because I want to break down why that aesthetic isn't all that healthy to begin with. So that, you know, young guys, young black boys are aspiring further to even like a childish Gambino who I'm like very critical of or uh, what's to do with that plays. He's he's in look he's Stanfield right yeah you know what I'm saying like well, also is like he he's gone down like a weird path I think post COVID no, don't tell me yeah no I mean I I loved him I I love him he he worked with fucking Boots Riley like you yeah. can't it doesn't get any better than that so I figured Boots no, I'm 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 mm. I think he I mean who knows he may just had a moment because he's also a rich actor. I Thank you. Yeah, post post He's like, COVID. Don't say Keith Stanfield. Yeah, no, I I thought he did like post COVID. I remember seeing some stuff, um, but somebody will do I think up. he's uh, maybe it's not like that. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. I don't know. We're gonna we're gonna rebuke any. We're gonna hold that. I can't bury any more black men I admire. Like between um, we started with Cosby however many years ago, and like I wouldn't even get into the Kanye shit. And, oh yeah, and fucking uh, now Killer Mike, like people I wasn't even expecting to come out of come out of a bag like that. Um, we, I think we have to check out Durag Hassan. Wait, oh, is it? Oh, oh, it's, oh, here. It's, this is I. Oh, I was, oh my god! Oh god! Fuck yeah, I'm gonna put it on, dude. They <laughs> sent it. This is big up the whole island massive. It's your boy Chetana coming straight from that golden glow. Is, is this Chet Hanks? Yeah, it's Chet Hanks. You've never Yo, seen I've him. never seen him actually do that shit. Yeah, that's that's Chet Hanks. Oh, he's, oh fucking God. Oh, Hassan, go. Hassan, you have you, you have transgressed. I, In the I name of it. God, but it's okay. I have the great extractive industries, mining oil, forest, real estate, agribusiness to stop destroying forests. Okay, this is... <laughs> okay, listen. I can explain. I can explain. Oh, oh, okay. I can explain. No! Why did you guys show him this? No! Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, no. 
Oh, I will never. Oh, no. It's Jover.